and in tune with Straight Talk for yet another Monday night. And we welcome you, the first timers, and for all those who continue to share the link, we thank you and ask you to continue to share that link so we can get first timers here. And for the first timers, Straight Talk rather is a public service program that facilitates and promotes free expression on all issues of national interest, be they legal, be they environmental, be they technological, social, economic, and or political issues. On Straight Talk, we do have a forum to express yourself. As I stay reminded of the words of that Favorite hymn of mine by Thomas Jackson, Franz Joseph Haydn. And an excerpt goes like this. We are called to be God's prophets, speaking for the truth and right, standing firm for godly justice, bringing evil things to light. So let us seek the courage needed, our high calling to fulfill that we may all know or all that we all may know, I should say, the blessing of the doing of God's will. My Straight Talk family, and especially for the first timers, nothing is watered down on this program. Absolutely nothing. We never tried to make it more interesting, neither by omission or exaggeration. We are not about sensationalism or creating excitement, especially at the expense of accuracy. We lead on the facts, the truth, the unvanished truth, I call it, the plain truth, especially when it comes to governance in St. Kitts and Nevis. And yes, we entertain the criticism. We like it. it. It helps to build us. When they knock us down, that's when we get right back up. And this program joins us together with people, or with, uh, with people across the Federation. We are joined with people in the diaspora all around the world. And I like to say greetings to Asia, Africa, Europe, and of course, North America. Let me say good night, good morning, and or good afternoon, because one of such, uh, uh, one of such, uh, 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 one of such greetings will be applicable, I should say, to the region in which you now find yourselves. And I know that we sometimes have disagreement. Some will agree with the positions of truth advance and straight up, and some will disagree. And that's fine, because we promote diversity. But please, don't sad me. You'll sad me if we start to become disagreeable. So let us thank Almighty God. Let us thank Almighty God, nonetheless, for helping us to understand, oh, how pleasant, oh, how good, and oh, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let us hope and pray for that day when we will all sing his praise together. So welcome once again, my Street Talk family. And 
for the first timers. Straight Talk is a participative program. By that I mean, we include your calls and your emails. And if you're so minded to call the numbers, the numbers, if you're so minded calling, are on your screen 663 6672 and or 646 829 6672. There's some who like what I call the cloak of anonymity. So we give you access via our email platform, and that's they are already listed as well. Straight talk patches at gmail.com. I always welcome my junior brigade. Tristan, I see Travis, rather. Travis, yes, Travis. I see him on a regular basis. Uh, I've seen him a couple of times this, this week. <clears throat> Going to uh, the ICC, that's what it's called, the convent school we normally call it. And Travis normally listens, and, and I haven't seen his brother Travon for a long time. And Tristan over there in Tabernacle, I hope you continue to remind your mom, Dwayne, young Dwayne. Kevin Hanley Nevis, uh, what, you know, CSS, uh, did well on this inter, in, uh, inter school sports. How is Jamal in Anguilla? Rucasta in South Carolina? And of course, my special lady in St. Louis. That's not a junior brigade, that's a special lady. We will see her soon, I promise you. Last week, on a sad note, we omitted to announce the death of Benita Tacklin, uh, Tax, I would call her, a pond extension. And she has left to mourn her daughter Diane, her sons Tony and Vincent, Faisens, and of course my brother from another mother, Bongo Thompson. And we extend condolences to the entire family. I also, some weeks ago, announced the death of Inez Constancy Lewis of Keon, but who resided in, in Virginia. The mother of Verna, Yvette Isilma Jackie, Lisi Pusky, and Ernie, and a grandmother of many as well. And I wish to advise that a Thanksgiving service for Inez Lewis will be held this Thursday coming, I'm not certain if we're able to see this clearly, but we held this Thursday coming at the Bethesda Moravian Church. Yes, it starts at 4 in the p.m. So for those who were asking on behalf of the family, I want to inform that the, the uh, service of, of for Inez Lewis will be held on Thursday, the 21st March, at the Bethesda Raven Church, beginning at 4 in the p.m. And for those who have lost loved ones, I know there may be others, we extend our condolences, and just to remind you, my straight dog family, that death is a process. And may I inform our first-timers as well that the format of each show that we consider our observations review after which a dissertation or a short thesis is presented. And the title of my thesis tonight is Just Like Fish, Corruption in St. Kitts Nevis Tinks from the Head. And our OIRs, our observations in review, are an integral part of Street Talk after which I will normally move into my thesis, following which I will then include your calls and your emails, as mentioned earlier, to allow full participation. And our OIRs is a time when we reflect on current issues and we'll see how we, it has helped us, help others, and what we have learned as a people. We may ask questions as well. And our first observation is in the form of congratulations to the CEMSS, the Charles E. Mills Secondary School and its athletes for being victorious at the 2024 TDC Interschool Championships that concluded yesterday, yes, yesterday, uh, 
over there in Nevis, and you can see the medal count. The medal count, uh, as you can see, 25 goals for the Charles D. Mill Secondary School, followed closely by the Charleston Secondary School with 16 goals, uh, 24 silver, and 16 bronze, 25 silver. Uh, for or uh, 28 silver for the Charles E. Mills Secondary School and my straight dog family. They were then followed by the by the uh, Basti High School, then the Washi. But Charles E. Mills, we extend congratulations to uh, the team for continuing to do so well very well i I say in this this uh competition the tdc sponsored competition and the second observation uh i want to address relates to the beautiful town of green valley in recent times it has become it seems the epicenter of quality in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And we speak of water and air quality, my straight talk uh, family. And this has been the focus of residents in that area in particular. And with respect to the latter, according to the, this ingenious press release from the Ministry of Education and its media unit, it stated that there was a plumbing issue affecting the students' bathrooms. Imagine that. A plumbing issue that was affecting the students' bathroom. But my sweet dog family, this false plumbing issue suddenly changed to demolition. And we saw the demolition of that uh, two buildings over at the school, uh, which started knocked to the ground, wooden buildings. This demolition all started over there in Keon. Men and equipment were used to how it tear down two wooden buildings, as you can see uh, from the screen, my straight dog family, in a hustle to tear down these buildings. No longer was it about plumbing. Instead, there were three words employed by all and still being employed by all. Mold, mold, and more mold. In the meantime, my straight dog family, in the meantime and between time, the Senkits Teachers Union and the Ministry of Education have both issued releases. And you can glean from the Senkits Teachers Union's release. They were very clear. They were adamant for standing for the position of the students, their teachers, and of course, on behalf of the parents. So my straight talk family, all of a sudden, this this mold issue or this plumbing issue, rather, seemed to have turned into mold. And the content of both releases is self-explanatory. But Straight Talk has confirmed, my Straight Talk family, we have confirmed that the St. Kitts Nevis Bureau of Standards was contacted and air quality tests were done at the Keon High School on Friday last, Friday the 17th. Now, 
While the teachers, students, and parents await the findings of that test done by the Bureau of Standards, Straight Talk can also, con- can also inform, rather, that the St. Kitts Nevis Bureau of Standards has the certified accreditation and the technical competence for testing equality. It is anticipated that the Ministry of Education, we hope, will be transparent and we pray that this is not another Bastia High School in the making. We understand as well, even though they claim it was, there were plumbing issues, we understand that at, uh, uh, steps have been taken to house the fifth form of the Keon Secondary School at the auditorium of the Keon Primary School uh, come next week, I believe. But the Ministry of Education started wrong-footed or on the wrong foot. But we are happy that the teachers have stood their ground and we're happy that some sense has prevailed within the Ministry of Education. And my straight dog family, again, we trust that they will be transparent and the school, the parents, the staff, the students will all be made aware of the issues within that particular institution. It is therefore baffling to witness that on the other hand, as it relates to the water quality, because remember I said earlier, it seems as if the town of Keon is now the epicenter for quality. So there are air quality issues and the air quality of the Keon High School is being tested. But there are issues with water quality. It is therefore baffling to find that the Water Services Department is going helter-skelter. Helter-skelter, my straight dog family, to put the water found in Keon into the public system without revealing, without revealing the what quality tests were done and by whom and what are the findings. Now, the same Bureau of Standards, I may add, has the equipment, has the accreditation, has the competence to test the water found in Keon. And I would state one more time, for the sake of clarification, no one is saying that the water is bad. And no one is saying that the water is good. The St. Kitts Nevis Bureau of Standards has tested 27 wells all around the country for the Water Services Department. So we ask a straightforward question, why not test the Keon well? Who has tested this Keon well, the water in the well? And my straight talk family, it is the arrogance, the arrogance of the so-called engineer Congress that comes to the fore each time. The arrogance of the soccer engineer along with the permanent secretary and the manager and water engineer, Cromwell Williams, that is on full display. Why are they being so arrogant? Why is there this lack of accountability on the part of all these public servants? And this, again, I will say is unacceptable my straight dog family. And we are appalled that many in the media act like 
palace guards, and they too remain quiet on such an important issue that can negatively affect the health of thousands of families in the Cairn and surrounding areas. But the arrogant minister and Soka engineer Congress has the goal to address the nation as we approach the United Nations celebration of World War Today and use these glib words, my straight dog family. Has the goal to do this. Water is essential to our daily lives, whether for cooking, drinking, washing, bathing, flushing toilets, cleaning, manufacturing, or agriculture. It is a crucial component of the environment. Our interactions with it directly impact our ability to access clean, fresh water continuously. Managing the delicate balance between human activity and water is crucial for sustaining life and maintaining good health. Having a dependable source of clean drinking water for any community or country is not a matter of chance, but rather a result of deliberate planning. It requires the cooperation of all stakeholders, including the government and citizens working together. My trade dog family, all I can say is insincere and shallow are words that come to mind. Surely, not a model for working together. No accountability. No transparency. A clear example of a bona fide arrogant minister. My sweet dog family. And thirdly, my sweet dog family, again, I want to, I should have told you in the beginning as well that that Straight Talk is going live or has gone live via Massive Vibes Radio and all Amazon Alexa devices can hear Straight Talk all around the world on this, uh, this medium. And today we are living in a polarized world. We are living in a country called St. Kitts, Nevis, where everything is politicized, my straight dog family. Everything is politicized. And the time has come, however, for our leader to come to grips with the fact that we, as a people, are highly intelligent, and for that reason, he must refrain he must desist from continuing to insult our intelligence, insult our knowledge as well, my straight dog family. He has to refrain from doing such. To many, Dr. July as our leader too often comes across as being daft. And furthermore, he has easily climbed the ratings as a pathological liar. And I wish to concur, I wish to agree with that sentiment. Because Terence Michael Drew never fails, my should talk family, never fails to disappoint me when it comes to telling the truth. And he's not a stranger to the truth. Because someone told me that this man, Dr. July, makes Dr. Douglas look like the Pope. He's plain and simple July. Let's look at the Human Development Report for 2023-2024, which was recently published by the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP, by Straight Talk Family. And without much thought, July sought to claim full responsibility for the performance noted in this report. Who would believe, 
my street dog family, that Terence Michael Drew would say that the performance of his administration in 2023 catapulted St. Davis to number one in CARICOM. Who would believe this, my street dog family? And if you see the number of things that we have done to put St. Kitts and Nevis on the right path and quickly being called the, 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 the number one in the CARICOM, that, was a, that, that shocked us. I didn't expect it to... I expect uh, that it can come. I always expect that it would come, but it came much quicker than expected. And it's from 2023, what took place in 2023. My street dog family, well... July had to be shocked because the Human Development Index, HDI, which is a statistical composite index or a statistical tool that combines elements in a standardized way in order to easily present large amounts of data. Elements such as life expectancy, education, and per capita income. And these indicators are used to rank countries into four tiers of human development, as cited above. Now, the responsibility for the interpretation and use of the data material, of course, rests with Dr. Drew. And Dr. Drew is entitled to his opinion, but certainly, my straight dog family, he is not entitled to the facts. And we will prove that in a moment when he said this as well. I have said over and over, if we were to establish a country on the principles of good governance, we will see results that will shock us. So that first result, we, I think we were judged to be number one in the CARICOM. That might be the first time we have had that in the CARICOM. Maybe in the OECS, yes, but in the CARICOM, where we rank this year above Bahamas, Barbados, and so forth. Those two countries which were always ahead of St. Kitts and Nevis. For the first time, we see St. Kitts and Nevis going ahead in the CARICOM based on what took place in 2023. My straight talk family, so let us quickly examine Dr. Drew Lai's big lie. And we can look at the Human Development Index and it's also important that we look at the trends. And they're all on your screen. And anyone can glean from the information posted on your screens that the Human Development Summary captures achievements in the Human Development Index. And look at the summary and the complementary metrics which consider gender gaps, inequality, planetary pressure, pressures, and multi-dimensional poverty. But read with me, my straight talk family. The Senkis Nevis says HDI value for 2022 is 0 0.838 just about 84%, which puts the country in the very high human development category. And we must be proud of that positioning. And we are positioned in or at 51 out of 193 countries and territories. But let's move down to the section which reads between 2005 and 2022, it continues. St. Kitts and Nevis' Human Development Index value changed from 0 0.759 to 0 0.832, to 838, beg your pardon. And that's a 4% change. It goes on to refer to life expectancy and gross national income. But the trends, my straight dog family, let's flick to the trends. That's to your right. You see that 
to the right of your screen. And the trends is what captured my attention. And credit must be given to the Denzel Douglas administration because Senkis Davis broke that 80% barrier around 2011-2012. In 2015, though, our Human Development Index moved to 8.829. And in 2019, we were at the current value or level at 0.838 prior to COVID-19. It was a decline, as you can glean again from uh, the, the, the trends, of our HDI to 0.832. In 2021, in 2020 to 21, it rebounded to 0.838% in 2022. So, why is Drew lying? Why is Drew trying to steal the credit of his predecessor, leader, and third prime minister? Is a question we ask ourselves. And we can then look at the multi-dimensional poverty index. Is the one that has also captured my attention, my straight dog family. And that one, again, is straightforward. And it says, though, if we look at it uh, 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 carefully, my street dog family, it says quite clearly, though, that the MPI, in comparison of our latest year, and it says the MPI expects, I'm having a little trouble reading my own screen here, my street, but the MPI, it, it, it says there, my street dog family, that no data uh, was gathered uh, for for St. Kitts and Nevis for that particular period. So the point is, though, Dr. July trying fever, feverishly, my straight dog family, is trying fever, feverishly, I should say, to, to own this performance. When in fact, as I pointed out to you, this data spans uh, uh, up to the year 2022. It is clear. It is clear for the whole world to see. And only a blind, even a blind man can see that. But those are my observations in review to the, tonight, my straight dog family. But the latter, I believe, provides a great point of departure. The latter, my straight dog family, provides a great point of departure for my thesis tonight, my straight dog family, which I have titled Just Like Fish, Corruption in St. Kitts Davis Stinks uh, from the Head. Throughout history, there is a prevalent view, my straight dog family, that integrity and corruption are deeply connected, both as concepts, and ethical realities. When we examine these two concepts today in the context of the performance of the July administration in office thus far, all of the ministers taught words like good governance and transparency, but in practice, the ethical and Political relationships confirm the links between integrity and corruption. The current chairperson of the IPL Commission, a retired High Court Justice, pledged my straight dog family to make St. Kitts and Nevis the least corrupt place in the world to use her words. Corruption has become rampant and has diffused its dark influence into every sphere of life, such as politics, government, business, sports, healthcare, education, the judiciary, and others. The Commission reiterates its commitment to supporting integrity building, promoting good governance, and enhancing transparency and accountability 
The Commission also pledges to continue to support the strengthening of the public integrity and anti-corruption regime, all with the aim of making St. Kitts and Nevis the least corrupt place in the world. Well, ambitious by Shrizal family, making St. Kitts and Nevis the least corrupt place in the world. But the Prime Minister said that his administration was serious about integrity in public life. And all his cabinet members filed their declarations of assets and liabilities. He said this when he ran onto Inside the News program, and he tries to hog all these programs in recent time he recognized. He said this on Saturday. For the first time, um, Abel, people... Politicians in St. Kitts and Nevis, they have to file what their assets are and their liabilities with the Integrity Commission. And those who don't file might have to resign their positions or they would have to face the court of law. And I will finally say that that is how serious we are. To the point where St. Kitts and Nevis is the most compliant country in the Caribbean when it comes to the issues of good governance and integrity in public life. But my straight talk family, how compliant this country is when it comes to integrity in public life will always be debatable as it has long been stated that no one can legislate morality. Many have a find that it is useless and even wrong to enact certain kinds of legislation because they involve trying to make people moral by law. And we can cite various examples to prove that it is an impossibility. Especially when we have those in authority like our Attorney General Garth Lucifer Wilkin who beat his chest in Parliament as he claimed to be the anti-corruption minister, my straight dog family. I'm sure we all remember this. I am the anti-corruption minister. Let the people in this country know. Let it be known that this, the people's government, does not tolerate and will never tolerate abuses of the treasury by anyone. A new day and a better way is upon us. The people have asked for openness, fairness, accountability, and good governance from the people who sit on this side. That time is now to this country. I am proud, personally, to be a man of action. Not one who just likes to bang his mouth. I can beat my chest. Yes, he beat his chest, my straight dog family. This chief legal advisor to July lectured, lectured the country about integrity and promised that the crooked will be found out. And surely... It was not too long after that he was found by a court of law to have committed a criminal offense not too long after his public boast and rant. Remember he said this to St. Kitts Nevis, my straight dog family. We must remember this. And I, I believe that it's important to know that no true leader no leader that excels in a leadership role can do so without integrity. And what is integrity? It's the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Honesty, sincerity, strong moral principles, these are the key elements of integrity. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. Amen. Amen, my sweet dog fam. Remember he said this to St. Kitts and Nevis. No leader can excel without integrity, which is the quality of being honest and possessing strong moral principles. But my sweet dog family, it is our leader who obviously possesses a lying tongue. And I swear that he would only last a moment and the truthful amongst us will forever endure. 
From the moment Terence Michael Julia assumed office, he flouted the Procurement Administration Act. Or I think that is the Procurement and Administration Act. He took millions of dollars, my straight dog family, from the government treasury, treasury under the guise of building the Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw Museum. Yes, he did. It's under construction, um, and we're hoping, really pushing to see if we can complete it by September 16th. I know that's a lofty goal, but we are really pushing. If not, definitely we want to complete it um, by this year. We expect it to cost in the region of maybe about $4 million because we want to build it up, make it a tourist attraction, um, create areas so that people can appreciate exactly how our first national hero um, would have lived and to immortalize his life um, once and for all and to convert his property into a place where tourists would visit, children would visit, all of us uh, would be able to visit as we uh, remember him for the tremendous work that he would have done. So his construction is going on and to about maybe $4 million uh, grand total at the end of the day. My Shudok family, that September predicted was September 2022, Mark you. September 2023 has come and gone. And another September 2024 is coming. And that $4 million have moved to $8 million of taxpayers' money already spent on this project. This project, the Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw Museum, which has come to an abrupt halt, my street dog family. And Section 13 of the Procurement Act is very clear as it relates to how the government procures goods and services or works. It is pellucidly clear, my street dog family. So we know that no procurement was done because subject to section 16, 16, the procurement officer shall, underline shall, ensure that notice of A, a solicitation for a procurement by tender or B, an invitation to pre-qualify for a procurement by tender is given in at least two newspapers of general circulation in the Federation no less than six weeks before the day and time for the close of bids or proposals or invitation to qualify as the case may be my street dog family tell me when you saw ever a notice in any of the local newspapers ex except I can recall uh, that the hospital security which was already issued and I'm speaking yes I've seen some from public works let me correct that but under the Jew Prime Minister's office because Terence Michael July established very early in his term a project unit in the Prime Minister's office. He appointed a project manager. Not long after, the father of this project manager received a 5.8 million dollar contract yes you heard in my street dog family you heard me right the father of this project manager received a 5.8 million dollar contract to procure 1,000 water tanks yes my street dog family the father of the project manager I said received a contract what signed a contract to purchase water storage tanks. So at least when the water truck goes, they have a larger receptacle to store the water. I would also like to thank Mr. Ashley Allers, because he's the one who brought the idea. But my Shutok family, how many of the thousand tanks, or as my friend would call them, the buckets, 
this lady from St. Peter's told me that when the truck came and, and poured the water into her bucket, she called it, it tumbled and fell. It's so flimsy. But how many of the thousand tanks cost in five thousand eight hundred dollars per tank or bucket how many of them were delivered my street dog family the only report on the number of tanks delivered was given in december 2023 by july as being 500 or more and this is what he said in the parliament as an interim measure the government introduced a new water tanks a new water storage tank project to ease the suffering of residents by improving access to water access to water by um, affected households under the project we have already distributed over 250 tanks primarily to vulnerable residents in upper kayon whites village Cerebori, cabbage and spooners village water shortage tanks were also distributed to the residents of st peter's a total of 314 water storage tanks were supplied to households throughout the Upper Monk Hill, the Glen, Paris Village, Fountain, and Stapleton, bringing the total distribution under the water project to about 500 or more. Bringing the total to about 500 or more, my Dog family. So what about the other tanks? We understand they were delivering just a few days ago. But my Sri Talk family, this is the corruption that we are talking about. For nigh two years, for example, questions have been asked about the CBI passport sold. And all. Terence Michael July would tell us that Timothy Harris signed more passports than him. That's all he's prepared to tell us, my straight dog family. That Timothy Harris signed more passports than he did, my straight dog family. What is the total number of passports that Sinks and Nevis has approved over the years? And uh, since you have taken office, how many passports have you issued under the CBI program? You would have, that you, you would have asked is about the number. And I've said to you before that the audit is actually being had. I am not going to call a number until that audit is complete, but I can tell you this, that the vast majority was signed by the immediate past prime minister. You don't know how many he signed, but he said the vast majority was signed by the immediate past prime minister. But the passport question is not going away. We'll never go away until July comes to the country and speak the truth. And a caller to Inside the News on Saturday last week posed the same question. And July has come a little closer to revealing the amounts. And he said that, and he promised to provide a report next week. Imagine that. I want to say that I will make a significant um, I will speak on the CBI program within, I will say, within the next month to really share more in-depth information. As um, we came in, we had to do, of course, our audit and research and to extract the information and to see what we were really dealing with. And so I want to say to the caller that more information and a more comprehensive um, set of information will be coming very, very soon within the next month. Next month is April, my street dog family. And we'll hold him to that. But we will not stop asking the question. He lied as well about the unrestricted access approved by the CARICOM heads of government. And one caller on that program raised a concern about the government's lack of transparency. And had him his, had his back against the wall in the Win FM studios, my street dog family. I was very disappointed, and I'm hearing it from others, that such a major, likely impactful decision 
as the free movement of persons that CARICOM is looking into or signing up to, was not brought to the people of the country. Because it is true that it was signed at CARICOM, but CARICOM heads represent their people. And even for this last week, it seemed as though even the national media here was trying to shut down discussion of it. We should have been having a continuing discussion, whatever else is going to take place, a broad discussion about the implications on education, on health, on our budget. And also we can add on crime, my street dog family. But Terence Michael July raised a concern of his own that only two reporters, only two journalists, he said, attended his last roundtable conference. And that's why the question was not addressed. The roundtable was open to the media association and only two persons, two media sources um, showed up and the opportunity was there to ask all the questions that could have been asked with respect to CARICOM. But he doesn't have to wait until the questions are asked, my straight dog family. Tell us what the hell went on. It's some 10 months ago or more that CARICOM heads have been talking about unrestricted access under the CSME, Revised Treaty. But that is his way for not telling the country about his plans for the CSME unrestricted access to St. Kitts and Nevis. But I pray that all the journalists will boycott his conferences. Don't make it two next time around. None of you should show up to his conferences. Timothy or Terence Michael July is corrupt as he draws down. He draws down over $45,000 per annum in a housing allowance. Are we aware of that, my straight talk family? Last year, he drew down over $40,000 on a housing allowance. But he lives in a government-owned house at the gated community there at Big Nights. Yet he draws down on housing allowance. How can he draw down on housing allowance, draw down $40,000 or more from the government treasury when he lives in a government-owned house at Big Nights? Yet he continues to rape the treasury, my straight dog family. And don't believe Lucifer as no salary increase will stop bribery, my straight dog family. None will stop bribery. In order to discourage ministers um, being corrupt, they should be paid well. In order to discourage ministers um, being corrupt, they should be paid well. My street dog family, nothing would stop this bunch of ministers from being corrupt. It was the third United States president, Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson it was thought he was thought to have said, and we pray, and we know, and I quote, the government will one day be corrupt and filled with liars. And the people will flock to the one that tells the truth. One day, my street dog family. And my street dog family, I am from Newton Bay Road, once called Fish Bay. And I have learned long ago that when a fish stinks, it stinks from the head. Well, my people, I have come to tell you tonight that just like fish, corruption in St. Kitts and Nevis stinks from the head. And that's my story tonight, and I'm not going to change it. 
I'm going to open the lines and entertain your calls and your emails, my Straight Talk family. And remember, again, that the numbers are here listed on your screens. 869, that's the area code for the local number, 663-6672. And or 646-829-6672. <laughs> uh, and my straight dog family, I'll open the lines momentarily. And just to let you know, and just to inform you that I anticipate that you will respect others. And of course, to achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. Let us try to be fair to all concern. And let us ensure, my straight dog family, that the things we say and or do will be beneficial to all concern. And in saying and or doing those things, let us ensure that they are beneficial, like I said, to all concerned. And in saying and or doing those things, let us strive in the process, my straight talk family, to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. And my straight talk family, it's, as I said, it's a uh, 8.58. It is two minutes before the 9 o'clock hour. I'll open the lines and entertain your calls, like I said. The numbers are listed on your, on your screens. And we can also access the program via our email platform, which is straighttalkpatches at, at, at gmail.com, my straight talk family. And the numbers again, 646-829-6672. That's the overseas number. And the local number is 663. That's 663, beg your pardon, uh, 6672. If you are calling that number from overseas, obviously you must use the area code, which is 869. Uh, 869-663. Six six seven two, uh, my straight dog family, and again, and I, I, I hope the lines. I know that I'll get my overseas line up and running. Uh, I, I know I, I, I detected an, an issue with it, so I'll get it up and running for you, uh, my straight dog family. That overseas line, and you can perhaps try it in the next few seconds for. That message I just received, I don't know why, but uh, again, the overseas number, 646-829-6672. Uh, six, six, uh, six, six, uh, and I check to see if it's uh, up and running now. I'll tell you in a minute if it is. Yes, I should have done that before. Oh, something is uh, not... Uh, Right with my overseas number. Let's let's uh I take the emails in the meanwhile and our first email reads my straight dog family who is now raping the treasury, Mr. A G is my question I ask when you were first appointed as Attorney General, you made some Talking remarks such as you will not be kind to people, to those who are unfriendly to our treasury, you referred to them as rapists. I don't know if you were just glad, excited, frightened that caused you to be jumping around like a happy puppy making these stupid statements. I forgive the ladies who were with you clapping in support of the foolishness you were saying and wondered if they knew the difference between their nose from their ears. 
No, sir. Don't you have any pride? Are you not embarrassed and ashamed? That the same treasury cookie jar, you gave the impression that you were so adamant and protective about that you now find uh, your hands stuck inside the treasury cookie jar. So be honest for once and tell us who is raping and being unkind to the treasury. Reads this email. And this other email reads, Mark, you say, or Mark, where? You should read the money gone. Where you gone? Where you gone, Mark? Every press conference you have, you give a complete and confused different story. One story you said you paid bead so much amount of millions of dollars for water drilling in Nevis. And B did not deliver any water and has not returned the money. Now you are saying you will only use bead for a percentage of the money, which is a paltry sum in the thousands. Now you are saying when B finished drilling in St. Kitts, you will get them to come back and do drilling in Nevis. So, in whose pocket the money ends up in? When Timothy said that you cannot spend money, you kick up like a horse and curse off Timothy. But he right, Mark, you cannot spend money. The only, for only an idiot, a fool, a dumbbell, a nincompoop, and a real stupid person would pay off a person for work he has not done. But again, the money is not yours. It's the taxpayers of Nevis. All the taxpayers of Nevis is money. So you don't give uh, one toot. But I still want to know who got that money. Corruption, corruption is systemic in the Nevis Island administration. My straight dog family. And let's go to the lines and say, hello, caller. Are you there, caller? Yes, I'm not hearing that caller. Uh, yes, the numbers again are six six three six six seven two and or six four six eight two nine six six seven two. That's six four six eight two nine six six seven two. Let's see if that overseas uh, number again. Something seemed to seem to be be uh, unusual with my overseas line, but I'll get that sorted out, my straight dog family, and forgive me for that. I'm treating the overseas um, uh, folks. I know that sometimes you you are you are not being able to connect with me, but I do apologize for that. We will sort that out uh, sooner rather than later. Yes. Uh, my straight dog family, the six four six eight two nine six six seven two. I'll try that number again while I speak uh, with you. Uh, six uh, four six 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 four six. Beg your pardon. Eight two nine six six seven two. That's the overseas number, and I will tell you. What's going on with that number, my straight dog family? But here, here this, my straight dog family. Get good night, Patches. Please check the internet. The reception is very poor. Is that so, my straight dog family? I don't know if it's uh, my internet. Our internet looks uh, very up and about. Uh, we don't seem to have a problem at our end, but I'll check it nonetheless. Uh, my straight dog family is saying that the internet is poor. Mr. Leibert, I was always of the opinion that Pam should have procured a radio station for themselves during their tenure in government. And now that they are in opposition, they could have utilized it to their advantage. 
The NRP Nevis has their own Choice FM 102.1 station doing a very good job. Now, if Pam apply now for a license, they will not get it as long as those spiteful, vindictive, and malicious people are in power called labor. If Pam had a station of their own to counter the lies and misinformation of Dr. Drew, lies, certainly they would be in a much stronger uh, position, I read this email. And yes, my uh, overseas line is up and running because I just saw it ring. So that's good news for those who are trying to uh, get get that overseas line. It's 646 again, uh, 829-6672. I actually just saw that number ring. So, so try that number for those who are trying to uh, get in to that overseas number. And I will now go to the local line at first. Caller, you live. Hello, caller. Mr. Bartid. How about though, Mr. Bibleman? Yeah, I am wonderful. Uh -huh. Now, let here, Mr. Bartid. Psalm 34. I will bless all. I will bless the Lord all times. His praise shall continue in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad. O oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts him. O oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed. O oh, taste and see the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Now, number three. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us learn his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They look upon him and they were lightning and their faith was not ashamed. This poor man cry. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him from out of all his trouble. The angel of the Lord come but around him, come around them, and that pay him and deliver him. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Mr. Patrick. I read nine verse. I ain't going no further than there. Mr. Patches, this me here tonight. You hear what I hear what the word of God say? This poor man cry. And the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his trouble. Look at him, Mr. Patches. He gonna <clears throat> God is going to deliver. They are poor people out of that trouble. And the last part of scripture I am going to Psalm 41. Blessed is the man that considereth the poor in the time of trouble. It shall deliver him from hard. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Mr. Patton, God is going to deliver him. You see what happened? Okay. He said, this poor man cry. The Lord is going to be like them. Okay. It's about to have a pleasant day. And wait, wait, wait. Let me give you Galatians chapter 6. And I would like to say that. Be not deceived. God not. God is not mock. Whatsoever. A man so it, he shall answer it. That is you're going to live the day and you're going to see what I am, what I read is going to come to pass. God is going to let you see it, live to see it. You know why you live in Sudan? Because you look after the poor parties. God will favor you. And not care what they do. They can't stop you. 
Be kind, you look after the poor people. Good night, Mr. Patty. Have a pleasant night. Have a pleasant night as well. That's the Bible man. Thank you, as always, for your spiritual intervention. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and it's uh, 11 past 9 o'clock hour, my sweet dog family. You may have just joined me. Our theme for tonight, our thesis, I should say, is just like fish, corruption stinks from the head. We use this uh, my thesis. And if you have just joined me, we reflected on the level of corruption that's rampant here in this country. And it, as I said, it stinks from the head. And although the chairperson of the IPL said this, we wish her well. Corruption has become rampant and has diffused its dark influence into every sphere of life, such as politics, government, business, sports, healthcare, education, the judiciary, and others. The Commission reiterates its commitment to supporting integrity building, promoting good governance, and enhancing transparency and accountability. The Commission also pledges to continue to support the strengthening of the public integrity and anti-corruption regime, all with the aim of making St. Kitts and Nevis the least corrupt place in the world. Well, very ambitious uh, mission uh, undertaken there by the chairperson of the Integrity in Public Life Commission. Again, I do apologize for my overseas callers. I'm trying to get that line up and running, and I'm certain I will uh, before the program ends. So I do apologize for my overseas callers who are, are trying to get in. I know you're getting a voice message, but uh, you can also try that number WhatsApp and let's see the WhatsApp if working. If not, the direct line, direct line not working. That overseas line also takes WhatsApp calls. So let's try the WhatsApp call and see uh, what's happening with that as well. But my straight dog family, if you just have just joined me, we are considering the thesis for tonight, which I have titled Just Like Fish, Corruption in St. Kitts Nevis Stinks from the Head. And I posit the view that throughout history there is a prevalent view. It's a well-known view that integrity and corruption are deeply connected both as concepts and ethical realities. And when we examine these two concepts In the context of the performance of the July administration in office thus far, all of their ministers taught words like good governance and transparency, but in practice, the ethical and, and political relationships confirm the links between integrity and corruption. Let's go to the lines. Uh, caller, uh, you're live. Hello, caller. Hello. Yes, my lord. Yeah. Good evening, Dr. Ian Patrice. Good evening, my... Yeah, brother, before you say humble servant. How you could, <laughs> how you, how you could be humble and you, and you showed me out to the volcano. <laughs> uh, you, haven't, you haven't come with me for a long time to the volcano. I wonder why. It's I'll tell you why it's, tonight. It's, it's too hot? No, man, no. Uh, it, ain't, it ain't too hot yet because I, I got some snow in my pocket. Okay. 
Good evening, Mr. Straight Talk. And especially initial M.E., J.F., and Boxer Short. They know who they are. And good evening to all who tune in to Straight Talk. That is, let me say, thank God for you. Like the boy be said, where your treasure is, there lies your heart also. And I have to say thank God for you because you're consistent in your program. And hundreds and millions of people look forward for your program every Monday and Thursday night. Because you come with the facts, the truth, and not propaganda and lies. And I, radical culture, I will never stop talking on radio show as long as my tongue could lift up. Because, that is, I do not like liars, thieves, promisers, procrastinators, and, what you call them, the arm, vagabonds. I do not like them. Because I will give each of them a baseball bat, let it alone to knock home run. Because I think a lot of Caribbean people need to learn to play baseball, so I will give them a baseball bat I'll give us. Get over the cricket. Mm-hmm. Now, this water thing here over Kayon, but let me tell you something, see? Mole don't go overnight. When Mole get the fertilizer to start, it should be chopped down all your clock by maintenance. And any government, they always have maintenance crew for the government departments and buildings. But a lot of them, they're just going there for the money and they don't work. And if they were doing the maintenance work, all the load of buildings around the place in Sinkit would not have the load of mole. Mole so popular and so, so overgrown that they look like a mango tree being mango. And that mole over Kayan, this administration, if they be smart, they would get smart maintenance crew to go around the island and check all the government buildings, schools and everything, and make sure that no mole start to grow. Otherwise, we wouldn't have these here. But you see, this government, this government here, all they're smart about is to make sure they get on a plane and go every week. And Mr. Lainju, he said that um, investors said they could not wait for the government to change for him to come in. And all the time he going away, he can't bring back no investors yet. All he's doing is, is, is starting coming on the radio and talking about smart, breaking dust for this, breaking ground for this and breaking ground for that. Now they had a smart school to be built. And because they ain't smart, they leave the smart school and go and go, go, go break down, break down a, a, a school, a, a building where they ain't smart. Now they can't go no further than you. Anyway, Patrick, I think I have said enough for now. I'll come back. Thank you so long, Patrick. Thank you for your intervention. We go. Uh, straight back to the line. I'll call you live. Hello, Carlo. Hey, good evening, Mr. Good evening, Milan. How are you? Carl Brown.
Support, right? With the C, the CEO, or wherever she is, is overseas and medical attention had a viral, um, where we say meeting when the meeting was held on the first of March, right? She do a viral thing, right? Now here is it, touches. How the labor union, which knows, which knows that they, they were informed about these young ladies, because why are you going to approach them and tell them, come to the union, pay $30 and they're going to represent them? How are they going to represent them when they don't tell them that they're going to get the letter between 11 and the 13? The letter didn't come the 11th and the 13th. The letter came on Friday. Right? Now, Patrice, there is where corruption is. And as I gave you all the history, the last two times, that every time Labour in government, many people lose their job at the ENC port. Right? Now, here is the other thing, Patches, corruption again. The Ju the July government campaigned very hard and told us that give them a chance in government, civil servants will get duty free on a number of things right while you are a civil servant. Up to now the civil servants are still waiting for the duty free. The other thing, Patrick, the campaign had and said that they will move the pop from $500 to $1,500 if you give them a chance in government. The Patrick, they're going on two years. And you know what they come up with, Patrick? Oh, pop is changed to lift. And it will move from $250 to $600. Corruption again, Patches. Right? The other corruption is our Prime Minister is not telling the country or coming before the country whether in town hall meetings, discussions, talk shows, and um, what we would say, referendum patches, if our constitutional lovers, we need a referendum on the free movement of these people. Patches, over, I could talk now and tell you, over 60% of the Federation do not support Dr. Drew and the Labour government of free movement of these Caribbean people into our countries. Our, our country, our federation at this moment. He having no discussion with us. The other thing, Patches, he having no discussion with us on same-sex marriages, right? Since last year, the European Union gave them an ultimatum, these Caribbean countries, that they have to sign on to same-sex marriages. Patches, up to now, our Prime Minister, corruption again. Remember they passed the law say um law they passed the law the US say um the 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 information must be coming out thing. Remember they passed the law the um a month a couple months ago, Patrice. Right? And we are not getting no information. Um, the, the, the journalist them is seeking information 
No information is coming forth. People are put in position and in committees as PRO. Patrick, no information. That is corruption. Corruption come in many, many, many farms, you know? Yep. Right? That's you, my brother. That's you, loud and clear. Right. The, the other thing, Patrick, we have been asking for over a year and several months. Dr. Joe, please to tell us how much CVI passport you have signed off on. That is corruption. No information. Dr. Joe, we want to know the total of passport we have out there. We want to know the top five countries that is after our passport and citizenship. Dr. Joe have nothing to say. Corruption, Patrice. Corruption come in many, many ways and many forms. So before I go, Patrice, we are asking, right? Because remember they passed the law to say that we are to get information um, Freedom of information. annually, straight and from the thing. But Patrice, we're not getting anything. When you ask a question, they, they go round the whole world and come back and don't answer the question. So Dr. Ju, Dr. July, we are asking you, please, to tell us what is your stand, and not what is your stand. Come to we the people in town hall meetings and find out what is our stand on the free movement of people throughout the Caribbean. Come to us and ask us, and even if we have to have a, a referendum, right, of same-sex marriages, we have, we need to have a say on that. It is not your money in your pocket and in your wallet. I go on, Patrice. Thank you very much, my dear brother. Um, do apologize for that little glitch with the call. Uh, and this is what <laughs> Dr. July said. He promised that he will come with the CBI information. The questions keep coming, but you should not stop, my straight talk family. He said this. I want to say that I will make a significant, um, I will speak on the CBI program within, I will say within the next month to really share more in-depth information as um, we came in we had to do of course our audit and research and to extract the information and to see what we were really dealing with and so i want to say to the caller that more information and a more comprehensive um, set of information will be coming very very soon within the next month uh, well we await that information my straight dog family uh, but it's 9.30, and again, I, I, I'm having some difficulties with my overseas line. I don't know uh, what's uh, gone wrong there. I do apologize uh, for that, my street dog family. I see that uh, some have been trying to get in on, on 646-829-6672, uh, but I'll try our utmost best to get it up but try uh try get it uh, via whatsapp the uh, whatsapp on that line is also functioning nonetheless uh but my trade of family uh, for those in the diaspora in particular again i do apologize uh, for uh the lack of access to our overseas line at present what's gone wrong tried everything here and we see uh, if we can get it up and running before uh, the program is done but in the event you have just joined me my straight dog family we are looking again we are looking at our thesis for tonight which I've titled just like fish the just like fish my straight dog family the Corruption Corruption, my straight dog family, it stinks. 
stinks, stinks. And we have examined our we have examined our thesis tonight and uh, in the event corruption in St. Kitts and Nevis stinks uh, from the head. And that's the general consensus here, uh, my straight dog family. In that Throughout history, there has always been this nexus. There's always been this link between the integrity and corruption. They are deeply connected both as concepts and ethical realities. And when we examine these two concepts, uh, today in the context of the performance of the July administration in office, thus far, the thought words like good governance and transparency but in practice, the ethical and political relationships confirm the links between integrity and corruption. My straight dog family, they just raised their salary almost 34%, no matter what they, they try uh, uh, to say. And my straight dog family, the the... Disgrace Attorney General tried to justify the raising salary by talking this nonsense. In order to discourage ministers um, being corrupt, they should be paid well. Well, nothing, no amount of salary would stop this corrupt government. Because, for example, there is a Procurement and Administration Act and the Soka engineer, in collusion with the Attorney General, have decided to award that contract to one company, having said that they looked at three proposals. But if you looked at three proposals, why you only name one company? Tell us who the other two proposals are, who they came from. Just like water. They're still in water because that was desalination. You're moving to desalination and you have decided to give one company and to tell us that there were three other companies. But the procurement legislation is straightforward. You must publish, publish your request and your notice of, of uh, solicitation. And yes, for once, my overseas I'll line finish. is working. And I oh, want to say thank you, Carly. Caller, thank you. For, are you there? Hello, Carla. Yeah, 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 yes. You, you have your equipment or something on, do you? And or do. Okay. Yes, you, you have your equipment on. I'm getting the feedback. Are you there? Okay. Yes, I'm happy. I'm happy you're so persistent. Uh, <laughs> my line for some reason was acting up that overseas line, but I'm happy you got him. You're live. Good night, sir. Good night, Milan. I'm very concerned about the water situation in Kion. But I want to I want to remind you that there is a section in the Constitution that says anything a government minister does in 
the execution of his duty. He cannot be held liable for it. So, if the members for number three want to give the people in Kayan contaminated water to drink, which is also number eight, the Prime Minister's constituency, there is nothing anyone can do about it. Because because it is quite clear that anything a minister does in the execution of his duty can be held liable. What has me also concerned is to compare Sankis and Haiti. People in Haiti can't read. And the people in Sengis is refusing to read. The results are going to be the same. And at some point, when people, when a man has no choice, he is going to make one. And the one he makes is not necessarily a good one. And I want everybody to be aware. Ministers and governments and all, you can do what you want. But there is a point in time when a man sees he has nothing to lose. Only you can lose. And good night, sir. Good night, and, well. Good. And have a, a good, very good evening. Thanks as well. And you do the same. Um, and you raise the issue. And the the issue as it relates to the water situation in Kian. I, it, it baffles me, really. It, it really baffles me as to why the authorities, and when I refer to the authorities, I start with the minister, because you mentioned the Constitution, and the, the Constitution, I think it's section... Either 61 or 69, some, some one of those sections speaks to the minister's authority uh, and the mandate given through the constitution shall have general management and control of every department under his or her uh, uh, portfolio. That, those are my words, right? But it, it, in a sense, that's what he's saying. But what beats me, though, is the blatant arrogance of this minister, whom I shall refer to as the Soka engineer, who doesn't believe that he has the, the obligation to say, to say to the country and to the people of Kian, yes, we found water. Yes, we found two million gallons of water. We will solve your problems. And yes, we can confirm that the water is potable and the water has no contamination whatsoever. The last well that be drilled, it cannot, underlying, cannot be disputed that the water had or still has arsenic contamination. The Bureau of Standards tested that well, sent their tests overseas, and what they found was reconfirmed. So why haven't they contacted the Bureau of Standards? And this is the corruption that we talk about. You know, the lies, 
the lack of integrity that we find in these men. The manager of water engineer, he too has an obligation to tell the country whether the water is good or bad. That shouldn't be debatable. It should not. Why should it be debatable? My sweet dog family, you are going to procure a $2 million desalination plan. Till this day, the country has not been told what will be the cost of the plant. The country has not been told who submitted proposals to, from whom you requested proposals to construct this plant. You came and you told us that you got three proposals, but you only named one, the Royal Utilities Plant. But who are the other two? The country should, have not, should not have to beg for that. That's your obligation, social engineer. Tell us. As a matter of fact, you have not uh, 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 sent out a notice of solicitation or pre-qualification as prescribed by the Procurement and Administration Act. It is very clear. I posted it before. I'll post it again for us to see my straight dog family. The, cons the procurement and construction, the, uh, the <laughs> procurement and contract administration act, I think it's called. Yes, it, uh, it speaks at section section uh, thirteen about the notice of prequalification of solicitation and prequalification. It is clear for all of us to see. It's a subject to section 16. And section 16 speaks to, to issues as it relates to national security. But subject to that section, it says, A, a solicitation for a procurement by tender, or B, an invitation to pre-qualify for a procurement by tender shall be given in at least two newspapers of general circulation in the Federation, no less than six weeks before the day and time for the close of bids or proposals or invitation to pre-qualify, as the case may be. So why? Why is this government behaving like that? Why? Why? And you, you tell us about good governance. You tell us about transparency. But we tell you about corruption. The Prime Minister, Dr. July, established a project unit in the Prime Minister's office. He appointed a project manager. As he in his office, there is another arm of the Public Works Department. And that project manager dishes out a contract to her father. Or did she recuse herself? Her father got a contract for $5.8 million to procure 1,000 water tanks. And the Prime Minister himself came to the country two months ago and said only f just about 500 tanks were delivered. And one tank, one tank is costing $5,800 for some flimsy water buckets, my street dog family. The Prime Minister himself, he commanded the house once occupied by the the, 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 the high court judge in Beacon Heights. He's been there for over a year. But yet he collects a housing allowance. Now how the hell you can be living in a government owned house and collecting housing allowance, Dr. Drew? 
That is corruption. And it has to stop. Tell the country whether you are collecting a housing allowance and housing allowance while you still live in a government house, a government-owned house at Beacon Heights. You have raised your housing allowance to $3,600 per month. And that works out to $43,000 or $44,000, uh, Dr. Joe. Are you going to leave that amount of money in the treasury? Why are you collecting that housing allowance and you live in a government-owned house? That has to be corruption. Carlo, you are live. Yeah, Patrick, this is my little short piece again. No corruption all over since it since Dr. Julie takes office. That man is so brother, if you go around town now and you're looking for the cheapest lie to buy you ain't gonna get on. Because he got it all. No, he went down say he went up the hospital and say he fixed the roof. Roof over Marg. And he got what you call a, um, he got the, 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 oh my gosh, I forget the thought now. Okay. He got the, the, all the media platform using to spread hip propaganda with the load of promises he made to the country. Prophets, that is starvation was, 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 was bad enough before and it was no was people who used to walking in the streets, they might just look decent and clean and so, but only God and them knows if they had anything substantial to put in the pocket. All because Dr. Joe and his lying crew, all concentrating and is filling up the long pocket. They don't care about the people who are suffering. Up in his constituency, you mean to tell me 161 sheep Born up dead, and up to now, he ain't gonna sympathize with the family of those animals, the owners of those animals. Nothing at all, all because they ain't vote for him. And he ain't get no, he ain't get no, 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 no legal voting. He boy the election, he said it, he boy it, and that is the reason why he can't function. He ain't got no plan. He had no vision for nothing. Nothing in this country here. And that man they going on so. Well, I can tell he. Anyhow, he go back to sign anything for the same sex married. That's it. Young Dong here will be a young Israel and a young Palestine. Because what going on in this country, it is not right, it is not fair. It is not constitutional. And he believe the country is his. He run in the country like a dictator. He becoming one. He, he, he exhibiting his behavior as one. And I agree with the email about the radio station. Because me and Mr. Politics, even the politics don't call in any show. Well, I don't know why, but anyway, he calls in and all he had to show them. And he makes his input. We've been asking for our radio station, for Team Unity. And up to now, we ain't got none. And then they're now trying to um, to, to, to monopolize all the radio stations in St. Kitts. My cousin got his own radio station and they give him a hell's and trouble to give him a license. And his people from the states had to ball out from them to give the man a license. Otherwise he would have gone on today. And that is what they're out for, to keep down, keep down those, all of us who, who are posing them with the rankings. You got a man in the way with the hat as opposition leader. But he's no opposition, opposition leader. He's an opposition cook, a hypocrite of Judas. And you can tell me he got people contributing to his nonsense where he portrays every Wednesday upon the radio. You hear them on it, praising him up. And he broke up the administration that was helping them. But every Wednesday they the it, calling in and praising him up. They have to be ashamed of themselves. Nothing but Jezebels. And, and, and the loyal. Thank you so long again. Thank you for your contribution. I agree with that email. With this email. 
uh, because I could remember and I stand to be corrected that when Labour won an election that is where the Freedom FM was birth, right after a Labour election. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. Ask the owner and the sister of the owner if they remember such a thing because Labour people have short-term memory reads this email. It's now some 8 before the 10 o'clock hour. I just got an overseas call, but my line seemed to be uh, acting up again. I do apologize to those in the diaspora, especially those who are trying to uh, contact the program. I don't know what has gone wrong with that line tonight. But for those who may have just joined me or joined me late, my Street Dog family, the thesis we looked at tonight, I titled, Just Like Fish, Corruption in St. Kitts and Nevis Stinks from the Head. And as we wind down tonight's programming, and just, again, for those who may have even joined, joined me for the first time, Straight Talk is heard every Monday and Thursday from 8 to 10 in the PM. And we looked, as I said, at our thesis title, Just Like Fish, Corruption, Instant It Stinks, from the head. And throughout history, I made the point that there is a prevalent view that integrity and corruption are deeply connected, both as concepts and ethical realities. We've heard a lot being touted about integrity in public life. And the chairperson of the Integrity in Public Life Commission made the point, my straight dog family, that, or made the pledge to make St. Kitts the least corrupt place in the world. Do you think that's ambitious? She said this. Corruption has become rampant and has diffused its dark influence into every sphere of life such as politics, government, business, sports, healthcare, education, the judiciary, and others. The Commission reiterates its commitment to supporting integrity building, promoting good governance, and enhancing transparency and accountability. The Commission also pledges to continue to support the strengthening of the public integrity and anti-corruption regime, all with the aim of making St. Kitts and Nevis the least corrupt place in the world. Interesting, my straight dog family. The Prime Minister said that his administration was serious about integrity in public life. And on a program called Inside the News on Saturday, he made this statement. For the first time, um, Abel, people, politicians in St. Kitts and Nevis, they have to file what their assets are and their liabilities with the Integrity Commission. And those who don't file might have to resign their positions or they would have to face the court of law. And I will finally say that that is how serious we are. To the point we are saying it's a Navy. It's the most compliant country in the Caribbean when it comes to the issues of good governance and integrity in public life. Nobody would ever believe July. How compliant this country is when it comes to integrity in public life will always be debatable as 
it has long been stated that no one can legislate morality. Many have opined that it is useless and even wrong to enact certain kinds of legislation because they involve trying to make people moral by law. And we can cite various examples to prove that it is an impossibility. Especially when we have those in authority like our Attorney General Garth Lucifer Wilkin who beat his chest in Parliament as he claimed to be the anti-corruption minister. He said this, my straight dog family. I am the anti-corruption minister. Let the people in this country know. Let it be known that this, the people's government, does not tolerate and will never tolerate abuses of the treasury by anyone. A new day and a better way is upon us. The people have asked for openness, fairness, accountability, and good governance from the people who sit on this side. That time is now to this country. I am proud, personally, to be a man of action. Not one who just likes to bang his mouth. I can beat my chest. And he beat his chest. And you remember he said, as well, this. And I, I believe that it's important to know that no true leader, no leader that excels in a leadership role can do so without integrity. And what is integrity? It's the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Honesty, sincerity, strong moral principles, these are the key elements of integrity. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. Amen. And he was found out. It wasn't too long before he, the Attorney General, was found out. But my straight talk family, it is our leader who possesses a lying tongue. And I swear that he would last a moment. But someday the truthful amongst us will endure forever. From the moment Terence Michael Julie assumed office. He flouted the Procurement and Administration Act. He took millions of dollars from the government treasury under the guise of building the Robert Dwellin Bradshaw Museum. Millions of taxpayers' money was spent on this project. And nothing is happening. Absolutely nothing is happening there. I said he established very early in his term a project unit in the Prime Minister's office and appointed a project manager. And all of a sudden, the project manager's father got a contract, a contract costing $5.8 million. $5.8 million the project manager's father got to procure some water tanks. Till this day, my straight talk family, the country does not know whether or not or how many water tanks have been delivered. As an interim measure, the government introduced a new water tanks, a new water storage tank project to ease the suffering of residents by improving access to water, access to water by um, affected households. Under the project, we have already distributed over 250 tanks primarily to vulnerable residents in Upper Kayon, White's Village, Cerebori, Cabitry, and Spooner's Village. Water shortage tanks were also distributed to the residents of St. Peter's. A total of 314 water storage tanks were supplied to households throughout the Upper Monk Hill, the Glen, Paris Village, Fountain, and Stapleton, bringing the total distribution on the water project to about 500 or more. So what about the other 500 tanks, Dr. Drew? Lie? 
the passport question as well is not going away not going any place and the country will not give up until we learn what is the situation with the passports we've heard that thousands of thousands of passports are out there and the latest thing Julia has said is this my street dog family i want to say that i will make a significant um i will speak on the cbi program within i will say within the next month to really share more in depth information as um we came in we had to do of course our audit and research and to extract the information and to see what we were really dealing with and so i want to say to the caller that more information and a more comprehensive um, set of information will be coming very very soon within the next month and that's what he says well, let's go to the lines and take perhaps make this my penultimate call for the night call you live hello caller good evening to you how are you my dear lady i'm Present. fine 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 how are you oh i see your dimples and i'm smiling <laughs> with you yes i think it is not going to get no better don't care what we try you don't just talk 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 because before you get in was the lawyer and 80 months after is still life a country cannot run and life so we is not going to get nowhere. We can just talk, talk, talk because we lie and more they try to fix is more breath than we're going to get because liar, liar after liar. Country don't want a liar. And tell him please to give back the people and give for a hundred dollars where he take back from them and put it on top them salary and got the poor people them out there suffer. I wonder how they just sleep when night on come. Them chewed us there. Patrice, have a good night. I don't have much money on my phone, so for you. Have a good night as well, my street dog family. Always good to hear you. And as we wind down tonight's programming, my street dog family, I must raise the issue as it relates to the continuing raping of the government treasury. And I'll repeat it one more time before I leave. Dr. July lives in a government-owned house and therefore should not be collecting $3,600 per month for housing allowance. That cannot be legal. It cannot be right. You live in a government-owned house, yet you collect a housing allowance. You commandeered the house at Beacon Heights from the high court judge and put the judge in a hotel at Marriott and moved into the house, changed all the furniture. And you are still collecting a housing allowance that is treasury rape, Dr. Drew. And don't believe what Lucifer Wilkins says, having increased their salaries. He's tried to tell us that bribery will stop. Bribery will never stop with this administration. In order to discourage ministers um, being corrupt, they should be paid well. That won't stop corruption. Not at all. But my straight dog family, it was a third U.S. president, Thomas Jefferson, who said this. And I quote, the government will one day, one day be corrupt and filled with liars. And the people will flock to the one that tells the truth. As one who was born and raised in Newton, 
or on Newtown Bay Road. We once called it Fish Bay. I learned that when a fish stinks, it stinks from the head. Well, my people, I came to tell you tonight that just like fish, corruption in St. Kitts Nevis stinks from the head. And that's my story tonight, and I am not going to change it. I will thank Almighty God for guiding our conversation tonight, and as always, I want to thank you, the callers. I do apologize for those in the diaspora for the malfunctioning of my overseas line. But those who called locally, those who sent emails, and the thousands of you who listen and continue to listen each time, remember, you are the ones who make straight talk, and for that reason, I say a big, big thank you. I am Ian Patches Libel and God's Spear. We will connect on Thursday for another edition of Straight Talk. Until that time, be good to yourselves and to all whom you meet. And remember, my Straight Talk family, that whatever your mind conceive, that you will achieve. But first of all, you just got to believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank him for taking you through the night. And my Street Talk family, keep moving on. Bye-bye. Until we connect on Thursday. Strong, pure, and true